Welcome back, PSMA members. Um, today we have Joanna Terry with National Business Furniture, and I'm very excited to hear what she has for this webinar. Um, and Joanna, without further ado, I'm going to let you take off, okay? Wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, hi, PSMA members. My name is Joanna Terry, and I'm the Director of healthcare for National Business Furniture. And my hope today is to talk a little bit about making good decisions when it comes to furniture and surface materials in your facilities. Chances are you don't buy furniture and you don't reupholster things terribly often. So when you do those things, you want to make sure that you're going to get a full return on your investment. So before we start, just a little about me and a little about, bit about National Business Furniture. We've been around since 1975. And um, kind of furnishing all areas of subacute facilities. Um, I personally have been in healthcare design about 20 years and um, specifically in healthcare the last eight. So I'm pretty excited to talk to you today about something I'm really passionate about, which is making those healthcare spaces um, both patient focused, um, but friendly for caregivers and um, infection control personnel as well. So the, the biggest thing for me is is choosing the right textile. Um, when you're thinking about chairs or really any soft surface in your facility, chances are you, you've seen cracks and split upholstery and dirty, stained stuff that you, you wouldn't want to sit on and you wouldn't want patients to sit on. And um, the, the key to keeping these interiors fresh is at the time that you buy the furniture that you do your reupholstery, you want to choose the right thing. Um, your environment is special. You're not an office. You're not a school. Um, you're currently with harsh disinfectants. Um, you're hopefully doing it a lot. And, and all those chemicals build up on your textiles and they cause some damage. Um, you, know, you might get some information when you make a purchase about care and cleaning. And I want to say that the care instructions aren't really compatible with what you're doing in real life. Um, so you might see something that says it's bleach solution cleanable. And chances are the test for that was for someone to leave bleach solution on that textile overnight or maybe over the weekend and come back and see if there was any discoloration or degradation. Well, we know that that isn't real life in a facility. Um, my advice, strong advice, is um, anytime you're doing a clean with a chemical or a disinfectant is to let it do its thing, you know, make sure that you're following the dwell time instructions, but then go back and clear water rinse. You're going to get all of that residue off of the textile, um, which is better for your patients. No one wants to sit down on something that's full of um, chemical residues, um, but it also is going to prolong the life of your textiles. Um, if you've not clear water rinsing, a good quality healthcare vinyl might last you two years. If you do that quick rinse, um, you might get five, six, seven years out of it. Um, so there's a lot of variability within the product category. So there's confusion of what's really appropriate for healthcare interiors, and we're going to spend a little bit of time on that. But I do want you to know that more expensive doesn't mean better. And I've given you a couple examples here. Um, so on the right, you'll see a little black, and it shows you per yard. And the left is um, considerably more expensive, $20 a yard, which adds up when you're doing chairs. Um, the one on the left, it's fine. You can clean it with a 20% bleach solution. Um, when you see the, the marker DR, that means double rubs, sort of a seeding cycle, getting up and getting down, rub, rub. Um, the one on the right, it's 1.3 million. No one's ever going to sit in a chair 1.3 million times um, before it's worn out or past its prime. Um, the one on the right, you can clean it with a 10% bleach solution, which is generally sufficient for disinfection, um, but it's also tested to 50 specific cleaners that are, that are for healthcare. So not only can you clean it with a bleach solution, but if you've got Virox on the cart, if you've got Cabicide, you can use that product safely on this vinyl, and you've paid $20 a yard less. Um, so we are looking at start with what you're cleaning with. No one's going to change their environmental services program because they bought a chair. Um, you know, if you know that you're cleaning with cavi wipes, find a, ask your provider to find you a vinyl that's compatible with that cleaner. It's going to save a lot of cost in the long run because those surfaces will last longer for you. So when we talk about textile choices, there's a lot of different categories out there. Um, first and foremost, on the far right, we have wovens. That's what you would know as fabric. Um, that's just not appropriate for a medical interior. They're porous. They hold dirt and oils. Um, if you have a, a bio spill of some type on there, the CDC says that 
you know, if something's contaminated with blood and it's a woven, it needs to be replaced. Um, there is no approved cleaning method for that type of uh, textile. So you don't want to waste your money and potentially have someone get a nosebleed and you've got to technically throw a chair out. Um, so wovens, don't use them. Um, best choice, in my opinion, is going to be good old vinyl. It's come a long way from what you might have been used to in the 70s. Um, you've got a lot of patterns. They've softened it up quite a bit. It doesn't generally have that vinyl smell anymore. They really are worried about off-gassing, so they've taken away the chemicals that do those sort of things. But um, vinyl tends to be highly chemical resistant, and if you find one that is a good healthcare grade, you shouldn't have to pay terribly much, but it should last the longest out of all of the textiles. Um, some folks really like polyurethane, so that's sort of that second box there. And polyurethane is vinyl light. It's, it's vinyl with some of the problematic things that have been taken out. Um, and that makes it a little more stretchy, a little more breathable. Um, but because it doesn't have some of those stabilizers, it's an organic. And some of the cleaners we use in healthcare att attack organics. Um, so what you find is that these break down very quickly if they're not cleaned properly with approved chemicals. Um, we had some, some cases out east where we had a hospital system that used polyurethane because it was really um, environmentally friendly alternative and a little less expensive. And then three years later, they spent $12 million to replace it all because it had become compromised. So we don't want you to waste your money. Um, silicone is a relatively new option for healthcare people. It is 100% silica textile. It's really stretchy. It's super for ink resistance. Um, it, if you have ballpoint pen or Sharpie problems in your facility, silica is great to think about because in general, you can wash that off with soap and water. You don't need to use harsh chemicals. Um, that said, it does tend to be fairly expensive. So if a good vinyl might be in the $30 a yard range, a silicone is going to be twice that. Um, so it, it really is a good application for pediatric or in places where you have graffiti problems. Um, last one here is Krypton. And Krypton to you would feel like fabric. It's got a moisture barrier behind so that if someone spills some coffee, it's going to heat up and slide right off. And we really only use this right now in senior living environments. Um, it has the feel of fabric. It can feel very homey. You can do wonderful things with textures and patterns, but it is very hard to clean. You have to use very specific cleaners. And I'll tell you that it does hold odors and oils. So probably not the best choice for clinical spaces, but great for senior living. So all of these textiles, except for ones, have a place in the healthcare environment. It's a matter of using them in the environment that is, um, is the best. So moving on, other materials that you might come in contact with that you might have to make choices on. Um, when you're choosing chairs, a lot of people really like wood for frames. And I understand why it's more comfortable. It makes people feel more at home, um, but easily damaged. Everybody has had, had chips on frame because um, the, the problem going around with the vacuum cleaner at the end is going into it. And you can see substrates, um, the finish, that means it's compromised. Um, and that means that bacteria is getting in into that wood and can harbor there. And we don't want to create an infection control risk, especially in a, you know, a critical space like urgent care or surgery center. Um, I personally like metal frames. I understand that they can be cold, um, but they are easily repaired and you don't have to do a black or a silver. Um, they, they often, you know, have nicer bright tones that can give you a little bit of that wood look, um, but you still get that long-term durability and the ability to clean it more effectively. Um, there are some new products out there on the market. If you're looking at the chair on the left-hand side here, that is actually made out of uh, plastic. It's an extruded plastic frame. If you went up to it before you took it, you had no idea that it wasn't wood. It's textured to look like wood. Um, so again, super wipeable, very, very durable. Um, we also have aluminum frames now that are textured and painted to look like wood. And you, and you get so much more of a return on the investment there, um, keeping the same wood look, but using an alternative material. Um, so for flat surfaces, things like desks, countertops, sinks surrounds, places like that, um, tops in your spaces, uh, my preference is generally TFL. So the difference between HPL and TFL, they're kinds of 
plant. Uh, laminate is non-porous. It can look like wood or stone or pretty much anything. Um, HDL is the, the one that we usually use best because it's really durable. Um, got a little extra layer of the substrate in the laminate sheet, but it has seams. Um, sometimes that means that moisture can get into those seams and um, we don't so much. So TFL eliminates that extra layer. You still are non-porous, but it allows you to wrap around the edges um, of desks and tables. And so you eliminate those seams and another potential point for bacteria to enter. Um, for those high touch, high moisture surfaces, sinks surrounds, any place where people might be washing their hands or having refreshments, um, the preference we have is for solid surfaces, Corian, quartz, things like that. Um, we often now are using Corian as arm caps on chairs because they don't um, they don't absorb skin oils. They really give you an extra layer of protection. And the cost on these things has come down pretty significantly in the last five or six years. So um, if you are in a high touch moisture area, solid surface is going to be the best way to do those things. Easy to wipe, easy to keep clean. So other choices um, on the far right, you know, if you're asked to pick things like, um, you know, paint and carpet and things like that, um, I'll tell you that the trend now for carpet is a uh, vinyl tile. Their carpet is kind of going away. And the picture that I've shown here is a project that we did down in Texas. And if you look at the floor covering, it really does look like a, a floor tile, a floor, uh, that is luxury vinyl tile. When I and it actually to bend down and touch it to make sure that it wasn't woven. It's very uh, well done. If you're thinking about curtains and exam spaces or just bays, um, if you can, if your facility can't afford it, disposable ones are definitely the better choice um, in terms of keeping things clean and fresh. And then easy way to keep your facility looking good for the long term is to just invest a small amount of money in door, corner, and wall protection. Um, those wall guards are $20 in most cases, um, and it keeps those corners from getting chewed up as equipment and people go past. Um, we want that, those walls to stay looking good longer. So um, if you are interested in sort of learning a little bit more about what some of the big IDNs are doing these days, um, there's an initiative out there called Health Hospital. And it doesn't just have to be hospitals. A lot of clinics are taking this um, in and starting to use some principles. But you can see some of the big systems using it. Um, of having um, less chemicals in the environment. So that includes no added or built-in antimicrobials, eliminating unnecessary flame retardants, um, free of some pretty harmful chemicals. And you might say, well, aren't antimicrobials great? Um, th there really isn't any clinical proof that they do anything at this point. And the thought is that it doesn't eliminate a good environmental services program. And why bring another chemical into the environment if we don't have to? So if you'd like to learn more about this, I would encourage you to go to their website. They have wonderful resources there. They've got some checklists, um, things to help you sort of get more involved if you're interested in kind of green chemicals. Um, so when we look at chairs, I do kind of point out some construction features to look for and things to avoid. So the chair on the right side um, is what I would consider a winner for healthcare. It has a wall saver design in the back leg. So what that means is that the back leg slopes toward the wall and it's going to hit your um, your wall before the back of your chair does. And that protects you from getting those, those mar marks where the backs of the chairs hit the wall. I would like to see straight down front legs because anything that's sort of kicked out is going to be a hazard for someone who might have a cane or a walker or who just is kind of shuffling their feet. So we don't want anyone to trip. Um, I like a metal frame just because it's more cleanable. Um, I'd like a higher weight capacity, something of 300 pounds or more, because we never know who's going to sit in those chairs and we want to be safe. Um, I say a generous clean out. What I mean is that space between the seat and the back of the chair. And you can see that it's a pretty big one. And what that's allowing um, someone who's cleaning to do is to see if there's any dirt or debris. Um, make sure that no one's dashed anything harmful there. So we don't want anyone to get a needle stick or put their hand on something gross. Um, but it also allows debris to fall through to the floor. Um, 
and get, really get in there and, and do a quality clean. Um, we want to avoid seams of feet. It's, um, it's a bacteria count. And it also potentially is irritating to someone who has sort of um, more fragile skin. Um, I would like to see a group arm style. So you see that if I wanted to get up out of this chair, I could easily use that arm to kind of help propel myself out of the chair. And obviously we want field replaceable components. Something where if a seat gets damaged, someone had keys in their pockets, we can replace just the seat. And we don't have to buy a whole new chair. So the one, the chair on the um, is not... Not a tool that I would recommend to someone in a medical facility. We don't have a clean out there. Um, so if it gets between the back, it's going to be impossible to clean. That slippery arm slope is going to be problematic for anyone who needs a little help getting out. And those, um, those pushed out front legs are a trip hazard. So definitely, um, when you're looking at those two chairs, they're probably about the same price. Um, making a good decision means choosing the one on the right. So when you're when you're sort of making these furniture decisions or interiors decisions, you're obviously trying to pre create a great patient experience. It's the most important thing that we can do with interiors. And a lot of people have the misconception that the HCAP surveyor caps for clinics um, means that your facility needs to look like the Hilton Hotel. It doesn't. There's only two questions on the survey that have anything to do with interiors, and they are: was my was my room my space clean? and was quiet. Those are the only two questions that have anything to do with interiors. Um, so things that don't really, um, you know, like people are, um, seem to struggle with wanting it to look like a hospitality interior. And, and I don't think that that's what our patients are looking for. They're looking for a place to have privacy if they need it, um, quiet if they need it, a place to um, spend time with their family if that's what they need, something that's sensitive to um, them as an individual, something that's inclusive. And, and those things don't necessarily mean that it needs to be the Hilton. Um, and I've got some good resources if you're interested. Uh, I'll give you my contact and information at the end of this. Um, good information about creating a positive patient experience without compromising um, safety and quality. So that's kind of the end of um, my presentation. I've got my contact information here, um, but I wanted to open it up to the PSMA membership to see if there were any questions that you might have. Absolutely. So if, if you guys want to um, put any questions in the, you could put them in the Q&A or even the chat part. Um, I'll see them and um, we'll be able to address those. But until then, Joanna, I had a quick question. Can you tell us a little bit more about the pricing, um, just kind of what the PSMA advantage um, of pricing with National Business Furniture is versus, you know, retail? Sure, sure. Uh, so we have come to an agreement with PSMA. And so for all of the members, um, you are getting what we would consider to be tier four pricing. So um, tier one is a, you know, just a pretty nominal discount off of retail. Tier four is GSA equivalent pricing. So you're getting our best possible pricing that doesn't get me in trouble with the government. Um, <laughs> so I would encourage you to um, check out our website if you are interested, if you have questions um, on, on the information that I've presented really or furniture in general, I'd love to help. Um, please feel free to call me. Now, and I would love to help you through this process. Um, it can be confusing and intimidating, and obviously, everyone wants the best possible result for their money. So, anything you need questions, um, please reach out. Absolutely, and I can attest that Joanna knows furniture and, and is very willing to help. So, thank you so much, Jana for Joanna for this uh, webinar and um, just helping us understand more about what you guys do and the value you bring to PSMA. Thanks so much. Thank you. Have a great day, guys.